let's um let's see if we could get into this because it's been on my mind for I guess some time. You all recall we did a couple of videos we posted up there on the YouTube's about whether um, our first African American president Barack Hussein Obama, whether he is a Joseph or is he an anti-Joseph? Now we already know that before even um, Obama was elected to um, office the whole October su surprise. Some of y'all may have short attention spans, but if you think back, I think it was, what it was it, um, 08 or so? And um, in 08, there was the October surprise, the Bernie Madoff and all that, the stock market, the banks, and so there was a big downturn, and a lot of that was just expectation. It was forecast, and they figured that Obama was a likely, you know, a likely shoo-in and everything, judging by the political climate at that time. So many, it's our belief that many of the ones who know how to, you know, move their monies around and have industry and those sort of cautious and 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 they just basically offshored money everything like slowed down because there was a whole talk about Obama's going to take from the rich and give to the poor and a redistribution of the wealth you remember that was the popular refrain from that time now around the same time we have this tea party you understand which is like the so-called republicans uh, I'm not going to just call them racist, but definitely some of their front runners do have uh, that old time racism just dressed up in, you know, a postmodern way. Anyway, be that as it may, the T or the terrorist party out there just hating on Obama, so forth and so on, and just stoking the flames. Now, Obama recently spoke to the Black Caucus, and we was checking out Tavis Smiley, the Tavis Smiley show that come on PBS. So, um, he had, um, uh, what's the sister's name? Uh, the congresswoman. He had her on there and it was talking about the fact that Obama spoke recently. Uh, this is what the 26th of September, probably around like Sunday or so. He spoke recently to the black caucus and at least from Tavis Smiley's, um, uh, perspective, it's like Obama was telling black people, stop complaining, almost like shut up and stop complaining. See, he's going on the internet, online, it's a whole bunch of right-wing bloggers that are like just having a field day off the fact that, you know how things can be interpreted, but that it's kind of clear and evident that black people, especially the black men and black males, are really suffering. We already were suffering and now they were kind of struggling. We was more or less struggling and suffering, but struggling and, you know, little victories. But right now, with the downturn, double-digit um, unemployment for blacks, for black people, for African Americans. You see, it's no, it's, it's no laughing matter, it's no jokey matter, and a lot of blacks are getting a little fed up with Obama because, you know, they, they pick up on what's been going on with the Republicans and Obama trying to be like the so-called peacemaker and bring everybody to the table and kumbaya and so forth and so on. They're playing games on him. He could have just raised the debt ceiling. He had the presidential authority to do that. He could have been much firmer. And I thought it was just me that picked up on that. But a lot of other brothers picked up on that same thing, that he really didn't show the, the firmness that even the office dictates, you know, and, and we would have expected him to. And perhaps he thought that by um, the kumbaya and the, the Republicans, they would have, you know, come to some sort of agreement and perhaps that could be used, you know, for the upcoming election, you know, that he's a bipartisan and crossing the aisles and bringing everybody together and so forth and so on. But unfortunately... That didn't work out. So, what Tavis now brought to light, and it seems like, you know, I've been watching Tavis for, for a moment. I, I really enjoy his shows, especially with um, his buddy Cornell West and so forth and so on. And he seems to have picked up on what 
a few of us, unfortunately, many of us haven't really picked up on it yet. I mean, really uh, judging the president as we should, because a lot of folks are still in this kumbaya mode that he's the first African-American president, nobody won't complain, the, the so-called bougie and boule in the middle, so-called class, don't recognize, really, you know, they figure they could weather the storm. But a lot of the real poor, you know, saying the po, the what we call the po black people, are suffering. And so now Obama comes to the black caucus. He gives a speech, and and you really got to check out this um, interview from the 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 evening or night of the what was it Monday, September uh, twenty twenty six. Um, you really got to check out the PBS, the Tavis Smiley show. I think it's online. You can go to the PBS website and 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 check out that interview. You understand? And check out what um what uh, Tavis is is really saying. And and he's making a very clear and almost a clarion call sort of point that Obama the first African American president would not say this to any other, you know what I mean? To no other people. He wouldn't tell the Jews, so called European white Jews, to stop complaining. Um, he he wouldn't tell the gays and the lesbians to, to, to stop complaining. He, he he wouldn't tell any of these other kind of groups that are very important to his constituency. I mean, look at the whole Palestinian thing that has been going on about statehood and how Obama said 12 months ago that in 12 months the Palestinians going to have should have their own state, and now they go to the U.N., and because Mayor Koch, former Mayor Koch, and some other Jews really got out there and gave a referendum and sent a message to him that, hey, if you, we, we were withdrawing out, we're crossing the aisles, to send a message to you, and it seems like the renegade Pharaoh got that message. Now, I said this before that I'm 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 the only one like mentions his name. Everybody already know what the first African American president's name is, his middle name, so forth and so on. But I want to call him what the Secret Service calls him. You understand? He is the renegade, the renegade. Now. Um, a one named Freeman Perspective has a has some information out there on the internet about the Barakatan. The Barakatan. It's not fully fully developed, but he put something out there, and it's it's catching. Though other other black teachers and lecturers are on to this sort of knowledge, I, I really think that we need to look at this in the light of who we are, where we're at right now. But let us examine. This renegade, renegade. What is a renegade? Do you know what a renegade? So, is he what the renegade Pharaoh or is he Pharaoh Re or Ra Naga? Is Obama Pharaoh Ra Naga? Is he the renegade? Well, Secret Service calls him renegade, but. Let's ask ourselves, and let's do a little bit of study on this. What does um, a renegade mean? So here I am. I got my um, Webster's Collegiate Dictionary. You know how we love the etymological brackets, you know, because um, when you're dealing with when you're dealing with words, when you're dealing with um, even they call it politics, and Obama is right in the midst of that politics, and the reason why most black folks are just suffering, just like the Israelites were. You see, this is all beginning to shape up almost prophetically, because Obama basically is interpreted to say the renegade Pharaoh basically has told the black caucus, and by extension black people, to shut up, and stop complaining. Get in line, shut up, stop complaining. Now, some blacks may interpret it as, well, you know, he got everything, you know, he he got a, he, he hears us and he's going to do something about it, so forth and so on. A lot of the black leaders in, 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 in D.C. are very excited and others about this whole Jobs Act. It seems like, okay, he's responding. But you have to remember that we're like in an election time. 
and he's going about campaigning as well. So we see how quickly he got out there to show the state of Israel and American Jews, especially those who are part of what he hopes is his voting um, constituency, that he understands their needs. He's not saying to the Jews, the foul um, constituency, you understand? Foul Ranaga or Foul Renegade is not saying to the Jews, hey, stop complaining. He's not saying to the gays, stop complaining. He's not even saying to the Republicans who have been hoodwinking and bamboozling him in this whole uh, um, uh, deficit and budget debate. He's not saying to them, to shut up and stop complaining. He could have done that by just raising the debt ceiling instead of having all this thing just stretch out, stretch out, stretch out, until now more of the very people who put him in the White House, you know, are suffering economically, financially, double digit, double digit. If if this... What, what what they want to call it, a recession, you know, what, what they want to call it, a, a economic crisis, a jobs crisis, whatever they want to call it. If America is suffering, you understand, and it was economically speaking, then black people are suffering twice as much as everybody else. So we got to be very, very clear on this. And one thing we have to say kudos and thank you to have is, Smiley for pointing out Sal Ranaga. You know saying? But who is Sal Ranaga? Who is the renegade foul? Now let's 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 recall this and we have to put a word out there to um Freeman um perspective with the Barackaton comparing Obama well see Freeman perspective he has this kind of theory. And some may say it's far fetched, but some of the far fetched things have more reality to it than what you think you know. Like we thought that we knew Obama. A lot of folks are saying, well, they know Obama's heart or they think they know his heart and he really does care about us as African Americans and he really he is gonna do something but he just wants us, you know, to, to, to not be fret. Don't fret ourselves, you know. But basically that could be interpreted also shut up and stop complaining. And and that is the message. Something that Tavis Smiley said that when they crucified our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, people were hollering and cheering. Because, you know, a lot of Negroes, they saw Faranaga, you understand? And they they, they got all happy. They, they hear him talk. They hear him speak. They're taking pictures. They're there. It, 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 it's a moment. So they're not really, you know how our people, black folks, are emotional. You understand? Using that right hemisphere of their brain, you understand? And not really, in, and even in a sense, maybe coming from the reptilian part of their brain and not really thinking with the analytical side of their brain. So let's first of all break down something. Cause we're going to do this a little bit different than we would do some other ones. We're actually here recording the audio of this, and hopefully we can, you know, um, have certain images that as we're speaking about this, you can see certain images that can help perhaps better tell the story. Now, first of all, we want to touch on a renegade, and we also want to touch on the Barakatan. And then as a pharaoh, remember we asked, is he a Joseph or an anti-Joseph? You recall that? Is he a Joseph or anti-Joseph? So far, up to that point that we did it, and even afterward, we said we don't see any major, major signs of um, anti-Josephism. In other words, the foul that knew not Joseph, this king, rather this king that rose up that knew not Joseph, and he started to oppress the people. Now, the abortion issue, notwithstanding, we have to understand this abortion thing and how you get all this money and support from Planned Parenthood, and we know that this is another genocide of the lost sheep or so-called black folks that don't want to recognize that they are the true Israel. I mean, even even America and Israel's state of Israel, the Jewish state enemy, Ahmed Anita Jad, he's even reported to say the one reason why he doesn't like so-called the Polish-German 
so-called state of Israel is that the Jews started out black when they left that region of the world and now they come back white. Yes, Akhmanidajad from Iran said these very words. So we really, you see, they keep us in a limited field, a limited, you know, the media. And, and, and if you just look at what that media is and don't really search out certain things and don't really get in a, in a clique of, of like-minded brothers and sisters where ones can, you know, share some updates and information, you're going to be left behind. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be a lot of lost sheep who are left behind because they are caught up in the smoke and mirrors and not really recognizing what's going on. It's almost like a delusion. You know, ones are suffering, ones are losing everything. Are, are we better off with the access? Are we better off three and a half or three or so years later? Are we better off, really? Yeah, we feel good. Yeah, we can tell our children, you could be the president. You mean be the president and do what Farah God did? Well, who is this renegade? This is what we have to ask. Who is this renegade? So here... With the Webster's New World College Dictionary, we're going to look up renegade, and we have it right in front of us. So renegade, or his modern Egyptian name is Ranaga, Ranaga, Ranaga. You know what the Naga is? If you know what the Naga is, then you understand why we call him Ranaga. But as far as a historical likeness to any previous foul, the Barakatan or the Unkanuntan connection with this particular foul as well as with his beautiful family is well put. And let's understand this because there's a whole politics of Unkanuntan and how that affected Egypt that we are not really peeping. And if we peep that and then we connect that with his uh, CIA, or not CIA, what they call it, the Secret Service code, the code word for the president or the code name, nickname or code name for the president is renegade. Well, what is a renegade? A renegade. Now, if we go back to the Spanish, it's renegado, past participle of renegar which means to deny. Then from Middle Latin is renegare, which is derived from re, re, which means again, and negare. It's not like they were trying to say re nigger. Re nigger. You know what it means to reneg on something? Black folks figure, well, we have that black president, all that he'd been saying on the campaign trail, but it seems as whether by hook or by crook, he's been reneging. So that Secret Service code name for him is accurate in more ways than one. They have us caught up talking about Barack. What does Barack mean? What does Hussein mean? What does Obama mean? What was his mama? What was his papa? But then the Secret Service gives him the code name Renegade, and nobody goes and breaks that word down and finds out, well, what is in that word Renegade? So here we are. And Renegade, it tells us it means to, again, to deny. Negation. The root of it is negation. In other words, negation is to say that's negative. Not positive. See, everyone was looking at the election of the first African-American president and saying, wow, that's really positive. Telling their children, you understand, that you now can lift your heads up because, look, there's somebody just like you. As president, an African-American, a black man, to the, the Secret Service, they call him renegade. Now, we call him Pharaoh Renega or the renegade Pharaoh Barakatun. Now, when we look this name up in the etymological bracket, it has negation. Negation. Are we better off three years later? And why is there not more 
why is there not more? I see. I want to say this correctly because I want you to get what I'm saying. Not just complain just to complain or not just, you know, cursing the man out or disrespecting the fact that, yeah, he is the first African-American president, but hold him accountable. No one is willing to do that. Every, there's, a, there's a silence out there from so-called black folks that is deafening, and in this silence, you know what I mean? What do they call it? The silence of the lambs? The silence of the lambs? The silence of black folks. If this was George Bush, there would be protests in the street, so forth and so on. There would be people would be talking about it, blogging about it, be making a front and center issue so much that even the news, whether the news and the media want to deal with it or not, they will have to deal with it because so many people would be moved to action. But there's an inaction, an inactivity under this foul Rod Naga, under this renegade foul Barakatun. So when we look up renegade, we find that renegade as 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 we go as we go further as we go further with this this word renegade it says um after c negation that's the next part of really digging into this word renegade and why did the secret service give him this particular code name the word replaces the middle English renegat. I think it's derived from Middle Latin renegatus, past participle of renegare. Now, all that's the etymological. So, what we get out of the etymological for renegade? We get that it means again deny, to deny again, to negate something again. Whenever we bring up a black issue, whenever we as black people want to, you know, say, Obama, we need this as uh, look at the jobs number, look at the state of black men. He, he gives us a speech during the campaign that black men need to step up and be better fathers, so forth and so on. Well, you're the president. What, what are you doing, you know what I'm saying, to answer that need for your constituency? Instead, when ones are rightfully murmuring and complaining, almost like the cries. It's like the cries of the, the Israelites. When the Israelites were suffering after Joseph, you know saying? When this new king rose up who didn't know Joseph, when the Israelites were suffering, they probably did the same thing. They renegated it. They again negated it. That's, that's, that's a non-issue. You know what I'm saying? Shut up. Get in line. Shut up. Stop complaining. Shut up. Stop murmuring. And then you have some foolish niggas who don't know themselves are going to just cheer. And Tavis Smiley hit it on their head. He said they did the same thing when they crucified our Lord and Savior. He just said they did the same thing when they crucified our black Lord and Savior. Because a black man in America, when we say black man, we mean generic, but we are pointing to the black male in particular. You see, when the white man felt like affirmative action was taking his jobs or when he feels like something, he's going to get out there and say, and, and be incensed. He's going to complain. He's going to protest. He, it, well, the white man, you know, so we know how the white man get down. He might even get violent to really let ones know that he's upset, and, and everyone understands that. He, he's upset, and he not expresses his frustration, and he got a little violent. We need to understand that. If a black man does it, this, 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 what's wrong with that nigga? What, what, what's wrong with him? And this is the very same, in other words, Obama is acting like a typical child of a white woman. Because the black side, whenever we start to talk about black something, you know, about our struggles, bring our issues to him, it's like, it's like he's disgusted. It's almost like he has renegated this love and trust and support that African Americans have given him. And we really need to challenge him as a people, saying when the Jews have an issue, they come to you. 
you understand? And he listens. He doesn't tell them, hey, hey, Jews, stop complaining. Uh, come on, stop complaining. Get in line. Shut up. He wouldn't dare do that to the gays or any of the special interest groups that we know that Obama appeals to because he figures probably... And and who knows how right this is? Because remember, Bush got in, and it wasn't because of the black vote. So maybe he figures that he doesn't really need the black vote, even though black people have been overall very well. They've been very well. Um, they had a well disposition to all of this shit that's been going on with the economy and everything else and basically being ignored by the Obama White House overall about real major issues. And we are speaking about foul Ranaga, foul renegade. Now, moving on, now that we got the etymology of renegade, we need to now look at the connotation of renegade. And it has a one and a two. I want you to really, really pay attention and think about this president for a moment and please go check out the Tavis Smiley um, September 26th uh, show I think it's on PBS it's probably playing up there now we, we just in fact we might even try to download it or see if it's online or whatnot and put it up on our channel because we want you to check this out it's very important i mean we we see tavis is it's fired up and he's been on this poverty tour now with cornell west really highlighting the suffering the plight and the issue of the worst affected and the worst affected is black people Yet we are told it's not a black America, white America, it's the United States of America. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, we know that. But you mean every other group can come to the president with their issues, and he entreats them, and he does something, you understand, to um, reach them halfway. And with us, it's, he needs our support, shut up, don't complain, so forth and so on. So we're supposed to sit aside and just suffer. We was supposed to sit aside in double digit unemployment and just suffer, Mr. President, or should we say Farrell, Farrell, Ranaga, Renegade Farrell, Barakatan. We should just, and, and, and see, this is where the, the Ankenantan or the, uh, the Kuenantan, speaking of Unk, well, the one they know as Ankenantan, he was also a Renegade Farrell as well. If you understand that part of our ancient history or Egyptology, you see, and all these New World Order, Freemasons, Illuminati, world rulers, they are all into that. You understand? So when we get into silly, stupid niggas, be like, oh, what you going into Egyptology? You understand? You need to do reality. And, and the people who are ruling you, they study these things. They put up, they put up millions of dollars. To, to read the people in all of these things and only reveal very, very little. You understand? They, they really don't reveal nothing to you niggas. It's, it's the poor, righteous teachers, you know, like myself and other brothers out there, that go around posting up these videos and doing lectures and trying to get the message out to niggas, but niggas don't want to hear nothing. But they're cheering on Obama this foul renegade and don't even understand what renegade mean or why the Secret Service named him this. Now, so when we look at this right here, let's, let, let's break this down. One, it's a person who abandons one religion for another, an apostate. You remember Obama went to a, what, what kind of church he went to? He went to Reverend Jeremiah's church. But what kind of a church? It was a Trinity church, yeah. But what kind of a church? It was a black liberation church. But remember what he had to do in order to get into the the good graces of the rest of America. Forget about black America, but the rest of America. What did he have to do? He basically had to throw Reverend Jeremiah right under the bus. And almost since then, we, we, we who's heard anything about Reverend Jeremiah Wright? So now, when we look at the fact that the Secret Service has given 
Barack Hussein Obama, the first African-American president, the code name renegade, and the first connotative um, meaning or definition for this is a person who abandons one religion for another, an apostate. Now, as you approach this from a Christian perspective, we're living in times of the great apostasy. If you understand what's going on, we're living in perilous times where one has abandoned true religion for another and the other is for the lie. Now, second, the second is a person who abandons a party or a movement. You see, Obama used to be, what, a community activist, a community organizer and a community activist? He ran on his whole campaign about almost like coming from the ghetto. It was like coming from the ghetto. I know what you know, Reverend Jeremiah Wright even helped him out in buku ways, but still got thrown under the bus. So every point of the definition of renegade fits more and more with this particular first African-American president or Pharaoh Ra Naga or the renegade Pharaoh Barack Hussein. One who abandons one's religion for another, abandoning black liberation, telling black people at the at the black caucus basically to shut up, stop complaining, stop murmuring, stop grumbling, get in line, and then to have all these racist right wing bloggers now throw that back in black people's face. Go go on the internet and look it up for yourself. You'll see these websites out there. You understand? Know Where they're basically saying, wow, Obama's telling the niggas to shut the fuck up. You understand? Know Stop complaining. But why are blacks complaining? Because they don't have jobs? Because, because they're losing their homes? Because they're homeless? Because they don't have food? The children are going to bed hungry? And then he's giving us some garbage to talk about other places around the world and so send billions of dollars to help all these so-called other places around the world, like the Arabs and so forth, the Arab Spring, blah, 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 and this and that and next thing. But the niggas right here, who was his main support, what, what has he done? Oh, he's come around when it's this time again to give us a good speech and figure he's going to wow us. You know, somebody had they call him what, long-legged Mac Daddy. Remember that, long-legged Mac Daddy? It seems like the chickens are coming home to roost, doesn't it? Because a person who abandons a party or a movement and goes over to the other side, and he, has he gone over to the other side? Are we still looking at him and judging him by appearances? And not doing, as the good book says, to judge a tree by its fruit. What are the fruits of what Obama has done? And in fact, black folks, what has Obama done for you lately? We're not talking about a few individual black folks who maybe he has hired or employed or done something for them in particular. But black people overall besides be a face up there that we now project onto him like a, like, a, like a carte blanche. We give him a carte blanche, or maybe he is that carte blanche, and we project and write on him anything we want to write on him. But we're not really seeing what he really is and what he really is doing. So this period of time that we're in is very interesting. It's almost like we're going all the way back to Egypt. We're, go we're going all the way back to a spiritual Egypt to prove, let every man be a liar, but Jah, Rastafari, is true. Let every man be a liar. But Obama is a renegade. He is a renegade, and he's proven to black folks to be a renegade thus far. Of course, maybe this is part of some big um, plan, some magnus opus. He has a he has a major work that he's trying to probably get reelected for 2012, and maybe then afterward he's going to show his true colors that he always was with us, but he's a political strat, you know, strategist, you know, and he had to do it just like this, and he was hoping that we would have faith and be confident and don't rock the boat, don't rock the boat, baby. 
oh, wait, is that what's really going on? Or we're just trying to gas ourselves up. Maybe it's right in front of us, but we don't want to recognize it. When the Secret Service, now the Secret Service, if you know anything about the Secret Service, this is a this is a top-notch organization. Now, you, you know, ones can have their issues about the government, CIA, you know, Secret Services, and, and all these kind of um, psyops, black ops kind of organizations. But one thing they do, they do their homework, don't they? Then they do their homework. They do their research. Very, very diligent. So if these people who are very diligent, you know, who 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 basically form almost one of the top um, tier of military professionals, and and you know, in military you need to have logistics, you need to have tactics, and you need to have a goal or a basic a basic strategy, you know. And if these folks analyzing Obama and the time that they had, looking over everything they had to look over. So we're going to give him the code name Renegade, and they're not going to probably tell us why they gave him that. That's that's another file that none of us probably have access to. But we still can figure out and pick sense from nonsense and, 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 and investigate it for ourselves and figure out according to the way they think, what does this title or what does this code name renegade really mean? And how is this renegade nature of President Barack Hussein Obama, the first African American president, working against us? Renegade, renegade, negation. Again, ra, negation, re, negation. He's again negating an issue. That is near and dear and important to us. This almost reminds me of what happened with the abortion issue on Planned Parenthood, started by um, what's his name, Mary Sanger, some relation to uh, what's his name, Bill Gates. All of them into eugenics, want population reduction, want global genocide, so they could be the so-called Earth's rightful ruler. You know, I mean, some, to some folks it may sound way out there, but even for you Christian folks, you remember what was going on. When that there rose a king who did not know Joseph, the the Israelites, from having it fairly decent for for a time in Egypt, now were going through hell, and this is exactly what a lot of black folks are experiencing. Black folks are experiencing hell. No, it's not the hell of the Ku Klux Klan and lynching in that sense. You have to remember, it's a so-called new world order. You understand? They do it in a new way. Like say, it's a it's, it's a new clan. What they said before, they said, "Watch out, nigga. The clan is getting bigger." But no, watch out, nigga. The clan is getting slicker, more clever. That, that's what's going on. So when they also call him renegade, they was call him another nigga, renegade. Think about think about it on that sort of level, nagare, nagar. Look. Look it up, my brothers and sisters. We basically just have been showing and demonstrating. We're just looking in the dictionary, not going into our ignorant heads. But we're going to say the dictionary is written by the people who know this language and study the language, so we're going to go there and find out what they say. We broke down the etymology, and now we're dealing with the connotation, and everything fits our analysis of this particular situation up to this particular point in time. Now, the last part of the definition for renegade, and it says ADJ or adjective means or says of or like a renegade, then it has the last word in this disloyal. Has Obama been loyal to his black liberation roots? Has he been loyal to that? Or has he been disloyal to that? That's the question. Now, there's much more to this, like underneath this renegado, you understand, which is an archaic variation of renegade, and there is renegade, R-E-N-E-G-E. And it says, see, renegade, and um, renegade means to back out of an agreement. Didn't he have an agreement? Has he backed out of that? It seems so to I and I. Go back on a promise. 
Obama made a whole bunch of promises, even to to, to black African Americans. He made a lot of promises. Has he gone back on it? I mean, where it was probably in his power or authority to do something about it, many would say yes, he has, and we would be um, inclined to agree with them. Secondly, in card games, to renege in card games, he, you play cards, you, not tarot cards, but playing cards. In card games, to renege is to fail to show suit when when required, to fail to, sh- to follow, excuse me, to fail to follow suit, to fail to follow suit when required and able to do so. So in in that way, he's also reneged. Now, archaic, and archaic to renege means to deny or to renounce. He did that with uh, Reverend Jeremiah Wright. You you, you recall that? Um, He did that. He's he's, he's reneged on a couple of people and a couple of things. And he's he's reneged even on the basic principles of of black liberation. He talked about all this kind of, um, all this kind of, uh, redistribution of the wealth. He did talk about it. And he's the president, a lot to his power to do, but he has failed to follow suit when required and able to do so. And in card games, it's the act or an instant. The act or an instant nagging. Do this. If you understand where we're coming from with this, sit down and try to and try to just, just just list how many areas can we find that he has reneged? You know what I'm saying? Not just generally, but first let's start off with ourselves, just like the Jewish community, just like any other particular special interest. And we as black folks are a special interest group. And if he doesn't regard us as a special interest, well, then that says a lot, and that should determine how those who, who vote vote. You understand? That should determine a whole lot of things, too. You know, where we give our support. You know? You could say, yeah, he's a black guy, so forth and so on, but we don't have our first African American president, Barack Hussein Obama, whether he is a Joseph or is he an anti Joseph. Now, 